So the scripture for today is just one verse, and it's Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. And it says this, and this is Paul uh, writing, okay? So Paul is writing this. He says, it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Uh, Thanks be to God. So uh, what we're talking about is spiritual disciplines, tools and exercises that we can use to help us grow closer to God. Uh, A good way to understand what a spiritual discipline is, is that it's that. It's a tool. It's just a tool to uh, help us grow deeper in our relationship with God. We've all heard the saying that someone might be like their faith might be a a mile wide, but only an inch deep. Right, And unfortunately, a lot of us fall into that category. And the reason is, is that we haven't spent the time training and developing these exercises and practicing these and developing our spiritual habits uh, so that they become a part of who we are rather than something we do, right? Uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verses 7 and 8 says, says this, says, train yourself to be godly. Train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the, this present life and the life to come. Our commandment is to train your, ourselves to be godly. Wow, what does that look like? Well, we've all seen sports teams, right? I don't know, some of you have probably been athletes and, and you've been involved in two-a-day practices and, and practicing and, and, uh, to get to uh, your bodies built in shape and develop the skills that you need in order to be on a winning team, right? Or, in my case, to be on a, a team, whether we want or not, right? But, uh, yeah, so in order to do that, though, it takes a lot of practice. And we've seen, uh, a lot of y'all seen movies where that practice takes place and you see how it works and things, or maybe you've experienced it in your life. And the practice they do, the exercises they do, are just tools that they use to help them get to where they want to be, right? Uh, when I think about a movie that uh, shows or illustrates this point, I think about The Junction Boys. Anybody ever see that movie, The Junction Boys? Nobody in this whole room. All right, a couple of you have. So the Junction Boys, it's a good movie. You can go check it out and, and, and watch it. But it's about the Aggie football team back in 1954. Uh, coach Bear Bryant became the, the coach of the Aggie football in uh, February of 54. And what he inherited or what he thought he inherited was about 100 guys who were out of shape and uh, who really weren't uh, developed to the point that he wanted them to be in order to play the kind of game that he wanted them to play. So in September the 1st, on September the 1st of 1954, he took what was left of his team after he had made some cuts, he took what's left of his team and they went to Junction, Texas. And they would get up every morning for 10 days. They'd get up every morning and uh, before the sun came up and they would start practicing. They would run and they'd do all these things all throughout the day. And they'd go to bed about 11 o'clock at night. And the people who experienced that as a player, uh, they call them survivors of the jump. They don't call them players. They survived that uh, training camp. Uh, and it's kind of interesting. Uh, Ray Perkins, who was a coach in the NFL, and also Gene Stallings. Anybody ever heard of him? Okay. He was on that team, right? And then uh, at 11 o'clock, usually sitting right over here, Dutch Ollendorf was the captain of that team. He comes to the 11 o'clock service. And, uh, and I didn't know it, but Joel Harold, who comes to the 8 o'clock service, he was the manager for that team that year. So uh, uh, the, uh, the more modern kind of versions where you see that similar kind of thing is, anybody seen Remember the Titans? All right, so my wife and my son, they have that thing memorized line for line, right? They can tell you everything that's going to happen. And then there's another one. It's a Christian kind of version. It's called Facing the Giants. 
So, uh, but they have the they have that same kind of thing in there where they go to this camp and they and they practice and they practice and they practice. When we talk about spiritual disciplines, we're not talking about that that kind of physical training, but we are talking about the same perseverance and the same intensity of training and the same consistency that's needed in order to, to be uh, the champion that, that they tried to be. Uh, so spiritual disciplines, all they are, they're exercises and tools that's used for spiritual training to grow closer, deeper in our faith and closer to God. So that's what a spiritual discipline is. Now we're going to talk about the discipline of service, okay? So what's the discipline of service? Uh, in our scripture today, Paul kind of describes uh, what that looks like. Uh, Paul says that he became, basically this is what he says, he became a follower of Christ. But before he accepted Christ as a Savior, everything was about him, okay? Everything he did was for his glory and his honor and his, uh, his enjoyment. It was about him. But when he met Jesus Christ on that road to Damascus, when his life was changed forever and he was converted to Christianity, right, he, he says that he died. He died on that, on that road. And what happened was Christ entered and started living through him. He died so that Christ could live in him. Uh, some of the, uh, in, in Romans chapter 1, verse 1, Paul describes himself as a servant of Christ. Uh, in fact, a lot of the disciples in the New Testament describes himself as being bond servants for Christ, right? Uh, in the book of James, it begins with these words. It says, James, a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then Peter, y'all remember Peter, uh, in 2 Peter uh, the book of Second Peter begins like this. It says, Simon Peter, a bondservant of the apostle Jesus Christ. So the disciples had this mindset that they were servants of Christ, that, uh, cr that they had died to self and, and Christ was living in and through them, right? So a bondservant, here's the definition they got off the internet, but a bondservant is basically... Someone who is devoted to another person and disregards their own self-interest. So it's about the person they've devoted themselves to, not about their own self-interest, their own glory. The discipline of service is about dying to self, dying to self. It involves training, and training involves continually making decisions uh, to die to self. So here's an example, okay? So one of the things I love about this church is there's a lot of people in this church who have season tickets to games. And sometimes they can't make it to those games. So guess what? I get season tickets. The first year I was here, this is my ninth year here, but the first year I was here, I missed one football game and never bought a ticket. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's awesome being a pastor, right? So... Uh, but here's the deal. Uh, here's, the, here's the question that I face, right? Uh, when we're talking about this discipline of service and how, you, how it plays out and the training that's involved in it, right? Uh, and what you have to do is you have to just practice this thing. And you go and you, and you do something. And then after you've done it, you kind of evaluate what you did. And you look at the results of what what happened after I did what I did? And then if you do that enough, then you can make decisions that are based on being a servant of Christ. Y'all follow that? Okay. So this is how it plays out. Say somebody comes up and they're going to give me some tickets to a basketball game, right? So I have the decision to make. Do I go to the basketball game or do I go to the bridge ministry over in Bryan and stuff bags of food uh, in the food pantry, okay? That's the choice. So I know me, and I've done this enough that I know my answer. 
Now, your answer may be different because I believe, I really honestly believe that you can serve God at both places. You can be a servant of God, and I'm going to tell you about how to do that, going and seeing a basketball game. I believe that. You can. I probably can't because this is what happens. Some point in that game, I'm going to get mad at the refs or the bus drivers, whatever you want to call them, right? I am going to get mad at them. And then I'm probably going to be tempted to say something and act in a way that may not be pastoral, right? So, but that's me because I just really get involved in it. And then ultimately my team's going to lose, right? And then I'm going to go home frustrated and mad and just upset. So uh, versus, versus I can go to the food pantry, put some food in a bag, give it to a person who needs food. I can see Christ in their face. I can listen to their story. I can be blessed by them. And I can experience the presence of God through serving that person, okay? I'm not saying that don't go to the basketball game. I'm just saying, for me, it's not a good decision, right? Uh, I get more blessing, and I become a better servant by going and doing the other thing. You may be the opposite, right? And that's okay. Uh, the reality is that, uh, that you can be, uh, being a servant of Christ is just, a, it's basically how you live your life. There's always opportunities uh, and the way you do this, the way it, what it looks like and the way it kind of plays itself out is this. You have to daily give your life to Christ. You just start each day by saying or praying a, a prayer that turns whatever you're doing and your life over to Christ. To die to self, right, and let Christ live through you. And so I know most of you are thinking, it's like, like, well, I'm a servant, right? Uh, I do this and I do that. I go here and I go there, uh, but usually, and I do this too, usually we add this little, uh, this little thing at the end of saying, you know, I'm a servant, and, it, it, and we say, if I have time, right? If it's convenient to me, if I can get enjoyment out of it, then I'll go do it. But if I can get enjoyment out of doing something else, I'll probably do that, right? Uh, Richard Foster, who wrote this book here, this is called The Celebration of Discipline. And he talks about all the, uh, not all, but uh, 16 different spiritual disciplines that you can practice in order to grow deeper and closer to, to uh, Christ. I bought this book 19 years ago. And, uh, and it's the 20th version. So that now they have the 40th, ver uh, 40th anniversary version out. Uh, if you want to go get it, it's still around. It's a classic uh, Christian book. But Richard Foster says this. He said, Service is not a list of things to do, but you can do things in the middle of doing service, right? Service is not a code of ethics. It's a way of living. It's a way of living. In other words, training for the discipline of service is not something that's scheduled, right? It is something that you do while you live life. Okay, uh, you're just intentional about looking for opportunities to serve people. Mother Teresa, one of my heroes, right? Actually, it's Saint Mother Teresa now. Uh, she was probably the best teacher of this principle, this service thing. And her thing was just love the person in front of you, right? Serve the person in front of you. Her, the Sisters of Charity are still around and they still have their thing going. And what they do is they wake up in the morning they're nuns, right? So they wake up in the morning, they make up their bed, they go eat breakfast, they go to mass, and then they go out the front door. And the first person they come to, they say, can I pray for you? And if the person says, yes, they say, well, what can I pray for? And then if they'll, whatever, they'll say that, uh, they say, well, I'm hungry, I need something to eat. Well, they're not allowed to leave that person until they've resolved whatever the issue is, Right? So they get the person something to eat, and then once that's happened, then they can go to the next person, can I pray for you? And it might take five minutes, it might take five days, it doesn't matter. You do and you serve the person that God has put in front of you, right? 
And that's what the discipline of service is about. You go and do your daily life. Go to school. Go to work. Uh, go to the hairdresser. I like going to the hairdresser and get... Some of you are not awake. I can tell. Right? But you go and just do life. Just do life. But in the middle of that, you look for opportunities to serve. Right? It's not that hard. Oswald Chambers, he said... Uh, that if you think, if you have to think about it, you're not it. Okay? Let that soak in. If you have to think about being a servant, you're not a servant. Because being a servant is a way of life. It's something that you do regardless of the circumstances kind of a thing. Here's some examples uh, of what I'm talking about. Let's say you're going down the road, right, and you see somebody with a flat tire. Well, chances are you didn't get up that morning saying, you know what, today's my day to fix a flat tire, right? You didn't schedule it. You didn't wake up with the intention of fixing somebody's flat tire. But as you go down the road, you see that, and because you're a servant, you don't even think about anything. You just pull over and you help the person. You get in your car and you leave, right? You may or may not tell anybody that you helped somebody doing that. It's, it's what you do in the middle of your life is serving other people and being there to help people in the middle of whatever you're doing in life. Say you're walking in the store, right? And you see somebody on a cane and you just, and, uh, and you just walk up and open the door for them. That's serving. That's being a servant. Not thinking about it is a servant's heart. It's, it, that's pretty much all, it's, that's all it is to it. It's not too hard, right? Uh, and so being a servant, and in fact, if you want to practice doing that, Missy, right? Missy will sign you up and help you uh, practice by opening the door every Sunday morning when people come in, right? You can be a greeter uh, to help. Uh, so here's the deal. How can you tell if you're a servant or not? Because we all do things, right? We all go out and help people in different ways. But how can you tell if what I'm doing is, is that the actions of a servant, if I've died to self and Christ is living in me, or if it's for me and my, me personally, right? So here's eight things that's in the book, that uh, ways that you can tell uh, if you are a, have a servant or you're doing things for yourself. Uh, so when it's for you, when you're doing something for you, you have to use human effort. You're going to have to come up with the ways and think about it and come up with all the, the resources and pull it off. If God's involved in it, then the resources are going to be provided. Okay? That's something you have to practice to see it come true. But I promise you that it happen. Well, if you're doing something and you're helping somebody and, and it's for you, the importance is usually on doing something big right? Instead of doing something that uh, may be really small. Uh, you want to do the big thing and not necessarily, not necessarily the little thing. Because you know what? The next one is, when you, if it's for you, you want to get that reward, right? That external reward. You want a pat on the back, a thank you, maybe money, who knows? But it's about, if it's for you, then you're doing it. You want the big thing, so that you can get the reward. If you're doing it because you've died to self, then it really doesn't matter. You don't even care if anybody even knows you did it. Does not matter, right? There's no counting involved. There's no statistics to keep up with. In fact, you may not even remember the person you helped, right? Because it's not about them, it's about being a servant. Uh, you're not concerned about results. Uh, you... Uh, uh, people, when they do it for themselves, they're really mood-driven, right? Uh, and, and it's a whim. I see a lot of people sign up to go on mission trips, and they'll go like one day, and they're ready to quit because they're doing it for them, and they're not doing it because they've died to self, and Christ is doing it through them, right? Happens a lot. So uh, it's temporary, uh, that whatever you're doing is a temporary thing. You don't have the stamina to, to keep doing it because it's not Christ living through you. And then here's, here's one. Uh, it's, 
uh, when it's about you, oftentimes uh, people will be ins insensitive to the people. It's about the task, and it's really not about serving and helping other people. It's about performing a task and getting a reward. And, uh, and people are just a means to get that, right? And so you become very insensitive to people uh, and what they really need. And then the last one is probably uh, uh, when you're doing it for yourself, a lot of times what you're doing becomes a competition, right? I did more than you, right? And that competition a lot of times leads to, to fracturing the community, the people you're around. They get frustrated, they get mad. Who wants to lose, right? So, uh, and so if you're the winner, in order to be the winner, it has to be a loser. I mean, really, y'all think about that one. And so, uh, and if you're doing it for God, it really, there is no competition. Uh, we're doing it for God and not for something else. So here's the deal, okay? I want to let you in on a little bitty secret about this discipline of service, okay? The way you pull this thing off is not to think about serving others, but to seek God. If you will seek God first in all that you do, the service just happens, okay? The ultimate goal uh, of being a servant is not really about helping people. It's about getting closer to God and seeking God. When you serve Christ, one of the, one of the, the probably the best benefit is that it's so freeing, okay? I don't have to count people. I don't have to, I really don't have to do anything. Just kind of show up and God will provide everything that's needed. God will provide the resources. He'll provide the opportunities. And all I got to do is just kind of live life. And, and it's, it's pretty awesome. One of the best things about being a Christian is that you wake up in the morning and you really have no idea what you're going to do that day. You don't know who's going to have a flat tire. You have no idea who's going to be walking up to the store with a cane that you can open the door. You have no idea of all the opportunities that God's going to put in front of you to serve other people. And it's so much fun to be able to do that. I say this prayer every morning when I leave the house. So this is my thing. You can come up with your own. You can use this if you want to. I actually stole this from Mother Teresa, so it's not mine. So, but uh, every morning I say, uh, Jesus, you died for me. So what can I do for you today? And then I go, right? I leave the house and I go on this adventure looking for opportunities and blessings to help other people. You know, I still schedule stuff, or, or at least Kay schedules stuff for me, right? And then uh, I still go to meetings. I still go places and do things. And I live life, but interwoven in, in, in life are all these opportunities to serve people. When you practice this over and over and over, it becomes who you are, right? Right? It's not about thinking about it. It's not about making lists. It's not about, it's just about living and doing. So uh, here's the deal. I'd like to invite everybody in this room today to die. Okay? Before you get too far, I want you to die to self. Die to self. Let Christ come in and live through you. Uh, begin practicing this discipline of service by seeking God, that's all you really have to do, is seeking God and becoming a follower of Jesus Christ. It starts by placing your faith in Jesus, right? Uh, dying to self and accepting the love that Jesus has for you. So I know a lot of you guys, and I know that you've already had this servant's heart, and I know that you practice this and you've become pretty good at it. Uh, and so your job now is to train other people. You become a, a spiritual trainer to train other people how to do this thing. But just in case there's somebody in here who doesn't have a clue about what I'm talking about, right? I want to make this invitation to you. Either me or Daniel or, or Jerry, we would love to sit down and have a cup of coffee with you 
and talk about how you can become a follower of Jesus Christ. It's pretty awesome. Let us tell you about this Jesus that we know and that we serve. Amen? Let's pray.